said, um, I was, Mike, I was having a chat with a friend about validation and community. What's the difference and what's God's design for that? I often find, so between community and validation, I often find myself reaching out in times of struggles, and I've been wondering if I'm seeking validation in my feelings and situation or seeking community, which is also needed as a Christian, and that fellowship and friendship. But where does one stop and the other begin? Where are we enjoying or seeking out community versus trying to be validated in something maybe that we shouldn't be? Does that make sense? Could you speak to this? Yes, I can. And, you know, validation, the action of checking or providing validity or accuracy of something. The second definition, I have this on your screen. I should be able to see this now on your screen is the action of making or declaring something legally or officially acceptable. And the third definition of validation is recognition or affirmation that a person or their feelings or opinions are valid or worthwhile. Um, I, I love their little sentence example. They have exaggerated needs for acceptance and validation. Boy, is that not the flesh. So there you go. We've got uh, checking, like getting validation. I need to be something to be checked, to be told that I, that it's right. I need validation from someone. That means I need to be told that it's right. Or that second uh, uh, definition there is uh, the action of making or declaring something legally or officially accepted. That would be what we have in Christ, right? You have validation in Christ. You may not always feel validated, but you have validation. You've been made right, and he declares you right. And it's okay for other people to say that you're right, right? That's validating something that is true of you. But then that last one, the recognition or affirmation, that felt need for validation, that it's valid or worthwhile, that it's right, that it's okay. Uh, I I think that's what... Uh, what Justine is getting at. And so I want to talk for just a minute about community and validation. Validation is when uh, something encourages us, I wrote this down, in being right or affirms our position. I don't need to come to you to be told that I'm okay if I know I'm already okay in Christ. But it's perfectly fine for me to enjoy coming together with you and encouraging you where you are wondering how right you are in Christ. What I don't want to do is affirm that you're right in someone else's wrongness, to affirm that you're right and someone else is not okay. That either becomes gossip or it becomes uh, validating a pharisaical idea. I don't even mean that as critical as it sounds, but for you to be right at someone else's expense is for you to get validation from a source you don't need it from, even if it's accurate, right? You don't need to be right because what you said is right and what they said is wrong, what you think is right and what they think is wrong, what you did is right and what they did is wrong. You don't need comparative validation. I'm right to be hurt like this. They shouldn't do that, right? My asking that instead, what I need is encouragement, and, and this is a good thing from you, and you need encouragement from me that we are right in Christ, that we're already validated by him, so I don't need to be right compared to anybody else. In fact, I can afford by grace for someone else to be right at my expense, even if they're wrong. Think about that for a minute. Here, I'll take a drink of coffee. I'm trying to slow down in my chat with you. So there's a big idea, right? What I can afford by grace is what Christ did. He became wrong for us so that in our wrongness, we could be made right. So I can, I tell Stacey this all the time. I used to tell her all the time. I need to tell her more. <laughs> now I need to get back to this way of thinking more. Um, I'm a, a critical thinker. I don't mean uh, that I'm down on everything all the time, but I tend to look at all of the parts of something and see what's uh, not working, what could be better, what could be different. Uh, 
And so this natural critical paradigm uh, gets me into negative thinking very easily. And so someone can say something and I want it to be said as well as it could be said. Well, that gets me in trouble because people feel invalidated, undervalued. Uh, If something is inaccurate, then I want to not make them wrong, but make them accurate, make them right. And uh, there's a natural tendency that I have to do that in the flesh has gotten hold of that as a Pharisee in my life, most of my life. So I have to be really careful that those natural tendencies of how I'm actually wired and how God actually uses me in in a discerning scripture and in uh, helping people understand with greater clarity and those wonderful gifts of God aren't used by the flesh to make me right at other people's expense. That's not validation we need. Instead, watch this. God can use that very critical skill to make other people right. When uh, uh, when someone says something that is true but could be said more accurately, then I can say, you're absolutely right because this is true. And I can clarify and sharpen what they're already right about. But I don't have to go, look how smart I am. You're wrong and I can say it better. So you have to be really careful with that. And, it, and it, it's the same content, but it's a different heart. And we don't ever have to be right at someone else's expense. So what I used to tell Stace all the time, I'm sorry I didn't get to this earlier, is that I would rather, early in our marriage, I would rather her be wrong and me be right uh, wherever possible. You want to know what leadership in relationships is? uh, I would rather my child win the foot race. I would rather my wife win the argument. Uh, I would rather my uh, boss look good in my employment. This is what grace looks like in practice. I don't need to be right to anyone because I am already righteous in Christ by grace. Because I have been made right with him, I can be right with everyone even when they're not right with me or they're not accurate in what they're saying. Like that costs me nothing. I have nothing to gain or nothing to lose, nothing to prove by what anyone else says, anyone else does, uh, anyone else thinks, anyone else's perceptions. I can afford to be wrong in someone else's eyes even if I'm not wrong. I'm not saying I'm great at this. I'm saying that's the truth. You can afford to be wrong in other people's eyes. At your expense, they can be right. The only reason that we should ever want to offer encouragement or correction or sharpening is for their sake. It's for their sake. In other words, I don't need to be right and you be wrong. I need you to be right, and I want you to enjoy the greater truth you might be missing. And so there are times when, you know, I used to want to beat the church over the head with the truth that they failed to teach me my entire life. Like, why were you teaching me that I had to live under the law and earn God's favor and uh, accomplish his peace and rest and righteousness in my life and uh, that I needed to have greater purity in my behavior in order to experience freedom from sin and all of these things that are totally the wrong economy. They're all old covenant economy with Jesus's name put on it. And I was so upset when I came to know the truth of my life in Christ. Think about the irony of that. I was so upset because of the the life that I discovered in Christ that freed me from striving to be better for God. Jesus is not the means to which you live a better life. Jesus is the life that he can only live by grace through you as we let him by faith. Jesus is not the means by which you live a better life. Jesus is the life that we, by faith, let him live through us by grace. Christ is the life. And when I came to understand it's not up to me to do better for him, it's up to me whether or not I let him do perfectly through me. And even if I don't do that, I'm not condemned for it. He's freed me from it. So I can afford to do it, and I can afford to grow up in it and fail. Incredible! Thank you.